thank you, Randolph. Thank you, everybody, for having me and uh, coming along to the Calgary Data User Group uh, for March, or oh, actually for February. Um, what are we here to talk about? Database Projects 101 in Azure Data Studio. Now, come on, respond. There we go. As Randolph said, my name's Warwick Rudd. Um, I'm a Data Platform MVP and the uh, founder and principal consultant with uh, SQL Masters Consulting based down here in Brisbane, Australia. Yes, Randolph did mention I, I do like uh, snowboarding. I, I started snowboard or I actually learned to snowboard some 23 years ago and I actually learned to snowboard in, in Whistler. So uh, unfortunately here in Brisbane, we don't uh, get cold enough to have snow. So people um, normally wonder why or how I got into to snowboarding, but um, it's not for everybody as uh, Randolph said, but I thoroughly enjoy that. But the most important parts on this slide for you are my contact details. Feel free to reach out to me at any point in time via um, LinkedIn, Twitter, or the company website to ask me any questions about today's session or anything to do with the uh, Azure Data Platform that you may have. So with that, what are we here to talk about? Here's the abstract for this session. I'm not going to uh, go through this. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to um, skim over the abstract uh, and that's why you've come along this afternoon, uh, evening, your time to join us for this session. So, why database projects? Well, they provide us that single source of truth for our database code that we're going to be working with. We get that uh, source control integration, which gives us our starting point for our DevOps pipelines. Inside of um, source control, we get that revision history, which means that we're able to see who made what changes, when and why. And adding all of those together gives us a consistent and repeatable outcomes for looking after our uh, database environments. Now, this session is a very heavily demoed session. And as such, what do we need to be able to do what we're here to talk about this afternoon? Azure Data Studio, it's been out for a couple of years now. We'll work through what we need, how to get Azure Data Studio and what we need inside of Azure Data Studio so that we can go on this journey so that we can have uh, our source control um, inside of uh, Azure Data Studio, we're going to need a local repository. So for that, we're going to be using Git. Now, Azure Data Studio is a multi-platform uh, application that allows us to install and work on a Windows, Mac OS, or Linux platform. Git is just as flexible. So for this session, I'm working on a, uh, a Windows machine. So I'll be using uh, Azure Data Studio for Windows as well as Git for Windows. But I'll show you how you can get those if you don't already know where they are. So that we're able to collaborate with our colleagues, at the moment, they may be sitting right beside you. They may be sitting um, working from home in the same uh, town, state, or they may even be international. So we need to be able to have our remote repositories. And what we're going to have a look at is using Azure DevOps, and or GitHub. And I'm going to incorporate both of those uh, into the session to show you how easy it is for us to integrate from Azure Data Studio, connecting our local repository using Git to our remote repositories of either Azure DevOps or GitHub. And last of all, of course, SQL Server. Whether that be a box product that we're running um, SQL Server on premises, physical, virtual, it doesn't matter, or whether it's one of the uh, cloud versions that's available for us to be using. With all of those, we'll combine it all together and we'll create, uh, and I'll take you through how we can create our first database project. I did mention that uh, it was heavily demoed, and that's all of the slides that we're going to be using for today's session. So let's dive in and have a look. OK, so you should be able to see Azure Data Studio at the moment, yes? Yes. All right. Now, um, just like Randolph, I run the um, data platform um, down under 
user group on uh, Meetup. And what I try to do with uh, with my sessions, with all of my speakers that come along, is that we try and make it as interactive as possible, like you would have the opportunity um, back when we used to have in-person events. So if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, put your hand up, or bring yourself off of mute and, and ask that question, just like you would in a uh, in-person event. I don't mind. Or we can hold them to the end. It doesn't really matter. But <clears throat> we've got Azure Data Studio. For those of you, if you haven't already played with Azure Data Studio, how do we go about and get that? Well, that's pretty simple. We're just able to open up our um, browser of choice and we come to docs.microsoft.com. Now, Randolph did mention that um, uh, he now works for Microsoft and, and the beauty of that is that um, he's working on the documentation side of things. So if we come across anything, we can point Randolph at it and, and he'll be able to fix it as well as other people in the team. But like I mentioned, Azure Data Studio is a multi-platform. If we scroll down just a little bit, we're able to see the installation media for uh, our three platforms. As I mentioned, I'm using Windows. Download that, we can do our installation very simply and we're up and running. As I mentioned, Git for Windows. We can come to the Git for Windows uh, URL, download Git, install that uh, in our um, workstation so that we're able to choose where our local repository is going to be residing. And we need to have that done before we start and work inside of Azure Data Studio so that we're able to access that local repository from inside of Azure Data Studio. Now, I did mention that uh, Git gives us the ability for uh, Mac OS. Nice and simple, we can come to the Mac OS download or we can come to the Linux or Unix download as well. Now, I did mention about um, Azure DevOps. I already have a, um, access to Azure DevOps. And for this, uh, for this demo, I've gone and created a uh, empty project. When I first started doing this, I actually had two projects. And it's easy enough to show you. Um, but I had two projects inside of um, Azure Data Studio, uh, Azure DevOps. And then I went, well, let's incorporate um, GitHub. So I moved and created the uh, create project from uh, Azure DevOps into GitHub. OK, so we can see here that I've just got my remote repositories all configured, but they're empty. We've got nothing in them. So with that, if we come back to Azure Data Studio, the beauty of Azure Data Studio for us to get started with what we need to do is all about extensions. OK, now for database projects, there's three extensions that we are um, concerned about. There's a whole lot more that uh, you might want to use, but we're only concerned about three. To uh, get our extensions, we just come to the extensions location over here, and you can see here that I've already got a number of extensions installed, as well as there's still a number of uh, extensions that I can use depending on what type of work I'm going to be doing. Now, the three extensions that uh, I mentioned that we're concerned about is if we first off, we have a look at um, our DAC packs. And the reason why we need DAC packs is because this extension allows us uh, to generate a DAC pack inside of Azure Data Studio. And this is a requirement for uh, database projects so that we can do those deployments. The second one that we're interested in is our schema compare. This allows us to do comparisons of our source and our target so that we know what's already in place, what are we looking at deploying, when are we supposed to deploy it, so that we can choose um, what we need to put in place. And this, um, these are prerequisites for us to be able to install database projects. Now, the third one, as I mentioned, database projects, and we can bring that one up, and away we go. As you can see, I've already got it installed. It's easy enough to install. You would have a, if it's the first time around that you're doing this, this would just say install. If you happen to work in an environment where 
you don't have direct access out to the internet to be able to just connect and download and install these um, extensions. What you can do is download the uh, v6 file, give that off to your security team. They can do all of their checks and balances against that, place that into a uh, shared location that you've got access to, and then you're able to come up here to our three ellipses and say install uh, from v6. Navigate to that shared location and install the uh, extensions and we're up and running. So we've got all three of those extensions in place. Now I did mention about having our local repository. Just to show you uh, my local repository, I've kept it very simple. So I've got a, a folder, C presentations and Git repositories. Now you'll see here that I've already got um, a local repository available here. We're going to um, configure our remote repositories from our GitHub and Azure DevOps, and we'll place those into that same location. But to get started with source control in Azure Data Studio, it is very simple. Once we've got the um, Git installed locally, we're able to just um, um, come to our source control environment and we would say open folder and navigate to the folder that we're wanting to go to. Before doing that, to configure our uh, remote repositories, it's very simple. We just go clone repository and we need to navigate out to uh, Azure DevOps first off. And we come to the project that we're interested in and we're just going to clone our repository. OK, so we copy our URL, come back into Azure Data Studio. It'll ask us um, where do we want to place that? Now, as I said, uh, I'm placing it onto my C drive, presentations and my Git repositories. Away we go. It won't take very long for this to complete because it's a brand spanking new empty project. So there's not a lot to um, um, synchronize down. Now, if you were just working with a single project, you could then say open and it would open that folder that we've just cloned. Now, I'm not going to do that because in prep, we're going to clone our GitHub repository. So we come back out to our GitHub URL. And we clone our GitHub project. Come back into Azure Data Studio. And just like we did before, no difference at all um, between being able to configure and, and connect with uh, Azure DevOps or GitHub. Come back to our repositories. And just like it did for our uh, Azure DevOps, it'll clone our GitHub and we've completed. Now, once again, I'm not going to hit open because it would open that uh, GitHub repository that we've just cloned. Instead, if I come to open folder and I navigate to the top level, then we'll be able to see all three repositories that I've got open. And given um, I want to work in both as part of the demos, this makes it easier to show you um, what that's all about. Now, you will have noticed that Azure, Dev, uh, Azure Data Studio has just restarted. And when you open up um, the folder to connect to your local repository, what that's going and doing is setting up your workspace that's required for you to be able to work with source control as well as with our database projects. OK, so that's just going through and um, finalizing and starting up all of the services. But you can see here that I've got a number of connections available on my local machine. Now, to preempt, a question that I do get uh, a fair bit is Azure Data Studio, is it just for uh, things in Azure? No. OK, Azure Data covers the full spectrum of all things um, data from a Microsoft point of view. So Azure Data Studio allows that as well. So we can work with, connect with, manage, maintain our on-premises environments as well as our cloud environments. For this demo uh, on my local machine, um, I've got uh, a couple of instances, but the ones that we're going to be mainly interested in, in working with um, 
is SQL Server 2016 named instance and a 2019 named instance. Don't be concerned about the versions. I'm literally just using these as, um, oh, I might need to start it, as um, uh, source and destinations. Let's just quickly, we'll restart those instances. While we're restarting, because it won't take too long, we'll be able to continue. Start. Okay. Come back in here and we'll come back and we'll connect to those uh, in a minute. But we know that um, we've now connected to our local repository because now under source control, it's now changed and we can actually see that I've got one pending change. If I come into that local source control, and let's just give ourselves a little bit more real estate, that one change was for that original uh, local repository that I already had in place. Now, a tip for you all, if you happen to be working um, with multiple remote repositories in different locations, when you create your uh, branch that you're going to be working with, name that branch appropriately. And the reason why I'm saying that is if we look at this top project, okay, so ADS create project, and it's just showing us that um, it's a, um, a Git project. And then this is our branch. So I renamed or I created my branch appropriately and I've called it GitHub or just added the prefix GitHub so I could easily tell that this project has its remote repository located in, um, in GitHub, as opposed to the import project is in uh, Azure DevOps. You can see the ADS demo project, it just has a, uh, a branch of master and you can't easily um, tell where that's located. You can find out where it is, but to make life easier for yourselves, when you're creating it, just give those branch names appropriately. So with that, we've connected to our local repositories and we can see all of the changes that we've got in place. So we're now ready to start our journey with database projects, staying inside of our single tool. So to do that, we come to our database projects. And when we do, we can see we've got a couple of options available to us. The first one we can say is open and existing. Now the projects that we're going to be creating uh, in this session today, we could come back and open those projects at any point in time. Or if you're inheriting some projects that somebody else has already created, whether that be from Visual Studio or VS Code, you're able to open those and um, work with those uh, database projects here inside of Azure Data Studio. We can say create new, which is where we'll start and create a project from scratch. And we'll work through that one second. To get you used to what it all looks like and, and what database projects is all about inside of Azure Data Studio, we're gonna come up here and we can say create project from database. Now what this is gonna do is connect to an existing database on any connection that uh, we have access to. And we're going to import that database structure into a database project, put it into our local uh, repository and um, push it out to our remote repository. And it's a great way to start if you already have a bunch of databases, but you don't have them in um, database projects, then you can easily go through this process to get them into your database projects to then give you that line in the sand to uh, start moving forward and working with your code all through database projects. So let's have a look at what that looks like. As I mentioned, all we need to do is have a connection. So we'll just make sure that for us, we wanna to connect to our 2016 instance. There we go. And Here's the number of databases that I've got located on that 2016 instance. Now we're just going to stay with the uh, demo database of AdventureWorks LT 2016. You give our project a name, you can give it whatever you want. You can see here that uh, by default, the project names are called database project 
prefixed before um, your database name. We can call it whatever we want. So I'm just going to call it nice and simple and we'll say DP import. OK, because that's what we're looking at doing. Where do we want that uh, project to be um, held? And this is where having the configuration um, for our local repositories already in place. So we're going to choose our uh, import project. And then the big thing that you need to think about is how you want the structure of your project to be um, stored and handled. And we've got a couple of options available to us. There's no right nor wrong uh, on what you choose. It's completely up to you. I'm going to stick with the schema and object type because for me that's a logical grouping uh, based on our schemas and uh, all of the associated objects that are associated with those schemas. So we're just going to keep it at that. Go away, hit create. I'll bring up our window down here so that we can see what's going on. Now this won't take too long, but what it's doing is going and connecting to my 2016 instance, extracting out or creating a DAC pack to extract out uh, all of the um, objects inside of that database and create the appropriate folder structure and all of those um, uh, object SQL scripts and store them in our local repository. And so you can see that that it's placing it there into my C presentations, repositories, uh, ADS import project, DP import. And we can see that we've completed already. OK, and we've got a breakdown of uh, a DBO schema, which by default, majority of the time your databases are going to have uh, some form of DBO objects. For this one, we've also got a sales LT uh, schema with an associated number of objects. And if we expand those out, we can see what it's broken down into. OK, so functions, store procedures, tables, etc. And then we have this security folder. And we'll talk more about that um, in the uh, second project that we'll create when we are creating it from, um, from scratch. Once we've got the project now, what we want to be able to do is check that uh, it builds correctly. Now, because we've imported this, we know it will build correctly because it's a um, functioning database that uh, we've done a straight import using um, DACPAC. So we won't do a build to start. What we can do is we can just say publish and we'll publish this out to a destination that we choose. Now the options that we've got available to us, we can uh, publish to an existing server or any connection that uh, we have access to. As I mentioned, that could be an on-premises, physical, virtual or cloud um, infrastructure uh, environment. Could also be a Azure SQL database or in a managed instance. We also have the ability to um, publish to a container. Now, while I do have containers or Docker configured on my laptop, I'm not using containers at the moment. It's just another destination, but we choose appropriately um, where we're going to be deploying to or publishing to. We choose our server, and this is where I said, um, don't be concerned about the version of SQL Server that I am using, right? I'm just using it as a uh, source and a destination. Uh, because that's what I've got uh, locally on my machine. Profile, you don't really need to worry about. It's from uh, if you're more working with, um, while you can use it here, it's more for if you are working with uh, Visual Studio and you could create a profile file that would have parameters in it that could change certain values at um, publish time. Um, for your project. It's there so that uh, um, for that backward compatibility, if you are opening up um, uh, a project from Visual Studio. And the last thing is, what's your target database? As you'll see, by default, it uh, gives you the um, project name as your database. You can call it whatever you want. We just uh, come in here and choose um, what the project is that um, we want to call it. So we're going to go DP import one, and we've got two ways that we can publish it. We can publish it direct or we can generate the script and we'll have a look at the generate script in the second half of the demo. So for this, we'll just publish that uh, 
um, that project. Now, what this is going to do is go, um, go and do an initial build to make sure that there's no problems with our project. It'll then go and um, connect to our instance, generating um, or using that DAC pack to then deploy into the 2019 instance to create us that database DP import. If you do have any errors, it will pop up here uh, in the window. We're going through OK, and we can see here that we're now onto that uh, deployment stage of deploying the DAC pack into our 2019 instance, mm -hmm. going to the database called DP1, uh, DP import one. It shouldn't take too long to complete because this is a very small project that we are working with. Just to show you while we're waiting for that, if I duck out to our um, local repository and we come to our ADS import project, you'll see here's our DP import and you'll see that it has the same folder structure as we're viewing inside of Azure Data Studio. If we were to come into our DBO, we will then see the tables, stored procedures, etc. They then have the associated SQL files um, that we have access to inside of Azure Data Studio. Okay, my machine's running a little slow. But what that will be doing is if we come back across to our connections and we just expand our 2019 instance, Come on, you can do it. There we go, we completed. And why aren't you? There we go. And there's our DP uh, import one. Now, the thing to remember here, there is no data in this. It is literally just the uh, structure that is being pulled across and, and deployed. So we can see that our source control has now changed. We've now got, we've gone from one pending change to 43 pending changes. That's because we've just created that database project in, um, uh, in that local repository. And so we've got to make some decisions as to what we want to do with those. And we'll have a look at that uh, towards the end of the uh, demo. So now that we've uh, created our first project, Let's go and create a project from scratch so that we can see what we need to, to do there. Now, when we are creating a uh, project from scratch, we get to choose what type of uh, database are we looking at um, publishing to, okay? And we've got those two options, our SQL database, and that can be, as I mentioned, can be anything for uh, our on-premises or cloud version uh, of SQL database as well as SQL Edge, because SQL Edge is a slightly different flavor to SQL Database. We're just going to be using the uh, uh, standard SQL Database, and so we need to give it a name like we did with our uh, import project. So we'll just call this Create. Once again, our location, we're just going to navigate to our um, Create project in our local repository. Now, the big thing to remember here when you're creating a new project is knowing what your target platform is going to be. And as you can see from the drop down list, we've got support from 2005 all the way up to 2019, Azure SQL Database and Azure SQL Data Warehouse. So based on what you're going to be deploying to, this is important because if I choose 2019 and try to deploy this to a 2016 environment, it may work. But if I've got some features or um, that are specific to 2019, then that's going to give us a problem. OK, so a little bit of forethought as uh, what we're going to be doing goes a long way. So we're just going to stay with our 2019 because that's what we're going to be deploying to. Now you'll notice that the difference between our um, creating from scratch to what we got when we did an import, we have only the um, external shell of that project. OK, so when you are doing this, you need to have that little bit of forethought and planning about um, how you want that structure to be stored. OK, so like what we uh, see in the uh, import project, we need to go and create our folder structure that we want to uh, store our um, database code in. Just like our import, we're going to have a, a DBO schema. 
And then underneath that uh, DBO schema is we're going to create some tables. Pages and some views. OK, trying to keep it um, very realistic to what you would kind of see uh, in um, your database projects that you'd be working on. To do that, once we've got our table structures in place, we're then able to say, let's add the table. We give it a, uh, a name. Now, you will see, we'll give ourselves a little bit more real estate. This is automatically going to give you a T-SQL templated file, okay, to create a table. Because this is a demo and to make it a little easier, I've got some tables pre-created and like you'll see here for our demo table one, it's um, a small table, but you know it's got some key features in it that we would uh, want to have on our tables, right? So we've got a primary key, we've got a non-clustered index, uh, etc. Now the thing to remember here, we're not when we're creating these, we're not uh, deploying or creating this table inside of a database. Right at the moment, we're literally just creating the script files that um, we're wanting to have as part of our project. So we don't want to hit the run. File. And if we expand out our tables over on the left hand side here, we can see that we've now got our demo table one uh, in our project ready for some form of deployment. So just to keep it realistic, um, demo two. Just a couple of scripts won't take us too long to do. We'll save that. And um, you know we can't have tables if um, without stored procedures to be able to uh, populate those stored procedures. Uh, populate those tables, I should say. The reason why I wanted to have a few objects in here is to be able to show you um, what the end result uh, looks like um, once we've uh, we've completed um, our project. Okay, so with that, we should now be able to come up here and say build our project. OK, we didn't do this step uh, for the import because we knew it was a uh, brand spanking new import and, and we weren't going to have any issues. If you've got any issues, it's going to pop up here straight away and tell us that uh, we've got some issues and we'd want to be having a look at those. So we can see that we've created our uh, objects correctly and we've got zero warning, zero errors. So with that, we're able to then deploy this out to um, our 2019 environment. So like we did before, we just connect to our 2019 environment. We're not going to have a profile and our create, we're going to call it create one. All right, this time around, I'll use the generate uh, script file just to show you the difference so that uh, uh, you're aware of that. Now, when it generates this script file, you're then able to save this Put it into source control if you want so that your um, uh, colleagues are able to have access to this and, and have their uh, environments built straight from this script if that's how you want to work. Now you'll see here, we just scroll down, that with our script file, we're not able to execute this directly. We can see here that we've got an error and that's because the script files are using SQL CMD. Now, unlike uh, Management Studio, enabling SQL CMD inside of Azure Data Studio is very simple. We just come up here to the Enable SQL CMD, job done. All right. So if we now um, execute that, we want to go against our 2019 instance, and that's executing away. Completed successfully, I believe, because there's uh, not a lot to, to do. Yep, we're all completed. And so if we come back out to our 2019 environment, do a refresh, we'll see our create one, and it only has the 
um, um, DBO objects in that. Now, at this point in time, if you are working with uh, your colleagues and they might be remote, and if we'd already uh, committed our changes up to the remote repository, they may come along and, and add some changes. And like we see in um, a lot of databases that have multiple schemas and multiple objects for those schemas. And so your colleague may uh, look at creating additional tables, but under a new schema. To do that, what we need to do first off is uh, we need to create another table, uh, another folder, I should say, and we need to call this security. OK, because underneath security, we then want to uh, add a script. OK, which um, we'll just keep it uh, simple and we'll call it security. But in this script, what this um, needs to have is your details to be able to create the um, schema that those objects are going to be created as. OK, so we need to have that in here. Otherwise, the deployment is not going to succeed. So we're going to have a schema called control. Once again, we then have a folder which is going to be for our control uh, objects. And just like we did for the DBO, we're going to have some uh, tables. Oops. On a folder, tables, and a folder called um, stored procedures. Now, what we're doing here, because the likelihood is, is you're going to see this as well, is that um, when we create a new table, that you have seen objects that have the same name, it's just via a different uh, schema, okay? So I wanted to explicitly call this out that, um, it is easy to do, right? Because we've already got a DBO demo table one, but we're now creating a control demo table one. And the same for our demo table two. With that, at this point in time, what you would want to um, be looking at doing is running our schema compare, okay? Which would then allow us to connect to our 2019 environment because we've already deployed our DBO um, schema objects into the instance and into that database. Schema compare is now going to allow us to choose what do we want to compare against. So we come across to our target and what are our different combinations of options? Okay, so we can see uh, we can have two types of options for our source as well as for our target. For us, we're going to choose the database option and we're looking at the DP create one. So if we hit that and go away and compare, that's going to go away and have a look and compare and come back to us and say, hey, you've got um, control schema and control demo table one and two in the project, but we don't have them in um, the destination as yet. As such, we can then choose to either deploy those changes directly from here inside of schema compare. Okay, once it's completed, you'll see the menu options up the top here that we can either apply it directly or generate the scripts like we did when um, we deployed first time around or we can just come back to our database projects and do exactly the same thing. Warwick, we have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, Carrie asked, uh, where is better documentation on which project structure to select? For example, flat files, object schema, schema plus object. Do you have any feedback on that? I don't believe, I don't believe Microsoft uh, specifically around um, Azure Data Studio has any documentation around what is the um, better way to, to structure it. Um, as I said, it comes down to your personal 
opinion or how you like to work. I've kept it using um, schema and object because I think that that's a, uh, a much nicer way of um, logically grouping all of your objects together as opposed to I don't think I would ever choose just flat which would then just have a huge number of script files sitting underneath one um, one folder because then that's going to make your administrative tasks so much more difficult in um, especially like uh, we've got here where we've got um, a control demo table one and a DBO demo table one and if you've got both of those in the same folder structure then it's easy to um, make a mistake a human mistake when you're trying to find uh, those table or those objects but I don't believe right. I'm, I'm aware of any uh, actual documentation on what would be better thank you and then there was another question there there are a few questions some of these can be answered at the end so that's up to you but the other one was referring to uh, where you noticed that there were nine problems identified is that going to be problematic uh, sorry, so when that you were doing the schema when you were doing the compare there were nine problems identified is that going to be a problem down the line i think it was uh, Actually, i think you were going to 12 now them. 12 now so oh, okay. those problem those problems there what is, what is that referring to yes so in inside of this um what this is looking at um and telling us that uh, right at the moment um uh, invalid object name so they they don't exist right in in the um, target view which is what we're expecting okay so in our um we can see in the results up here we can see that we've got control demo table one demo table two and our schema they are existing in our source which is our project but they don't exist over in our target and so this is telling us that demo table one right uh, that the schema doesn't exist or we don't have permissions to use it because we're trying to do a comparison against that um, in the uh, database itself, right? If we were to then choose, so we've got all of these selected and let's just do the apply straight from here. Yes. Now that's going to generate that DAC pack and apply those over against the 2019 instance. And it shouldn't take too long given that it is uh, three small tables and there we go we've successfully um, made those changes if we were to then run our uh, comparison again this will come back and tell us that um, there's no no differences between our source and our target and i believe what should happen um, we can then we don't need to worry about because if i roll these up Right, so you can all see that they're um, to do with um, the particular scripts that we have got. Um, so that's our uh, da -da -da, populate demo table one in our DBO. Yeah, so they, I wouldn't be concerned about these um, at all all because we were creating those objects or doing a comparison against those so we can see that we've got no no differences okay if we were to come back to our connection do our refresh we'll actually see i'm going to create one see our tables there's all of our um our control and demo tables if you happen to if we come back to our projects if when you did a build okay so when we come here and we go build and we look at the um, the output if you had an error down here so it popped up and, and it'll give you the uh, warnings and errors associated to the build that you're doing what you need to be aware of is if we come back to our project and we say edit sql project file now we'll give ourselves a little bit more real estate so we don't have any issues but the project file gives us all of the information about our project the big thing that you need to be aware of is at the bottom of the file 
we can see here we've got this item group and it's got all of our folder includes. OK, so this is telling us that we've got DBO tables, stored procs, views, and we've gone and created a control tables and stored procedures and that we've got the um, the security folder as well, right? Because that security folder is going to have our security file, which like we created, which has that schema. Now, we can also then see that here's our breakdown of uh, all of the files and their locations that are comprised of this pro uh, in this um, database project. And so you would want to be having a look in here, depending on if um, you happen to have got your um, or didn't create this folder, right, with this file. So therefore, you're not creating a schema. You're going to have issues that this schema doesn't exist and we can't actually, um, when we go to try and deploy it, that schema won't have been created in our database and that's going to cause us problems. Now, if you happen to um, be used to working with database projects inside of Visual Studio, you may be aware that uh, if you had a, a script file that you um, used in other projects, you can easily copy that file, drop it into uh, the folder structure for that project, and inside of Visual Studio, you can add an existing item into the project. Unfortunately, we don't have that capability right now. I don't know if it's going to be added in or not, but we can't just take a copy of a file and drop it in um, to the project for that to be added. We can do it manually though. And what we would look at doing is coming into um, this project file and um, adding the appropriate file that uh, we've got. So let's say um, we wanted to add a view, for example. If I um, come back out, uh, yeah, I can do it here. So let's just say that um, we wanted to add this view tables um, back into our, um, our new project that we've, we've just created. So if we come back to our repository for our create, So we've now got that, um, we've, we've created that um, folder and that uh, view. But if we do a refresh, our project doesn't know anything about what we've just added, okay? We don't have the folder structure or anything like that. But what we can do, and I'll just put that name in here, we can say, And doing this, as you'll see, is very manual and uh, potentially prone to making human mistakes. So if you know somebody who is um, good with PowerShell, they could potentially write something that um, is able to scan across your, uh, your project folders. If you were looking at adding from scratch a large number of objects into um, uh, into your, your project and wanting them um, added because you've already created uh, those script files. If we were to then save this, you'll see that it automatically asks, do you want to reload the project? 
to yes we do because then that's going to um, look at what are those changes that we uh, made and you can see now that we have um, this uh, under the control we have our views folder and there's our um, uh, demo view okay so that you can add that back in if we were to then do our um, um, schema compare we would see that that uh, file uh, or object no longer uh, doesn't exist in our destination and we would de then be able to deploy that so we can see that with all of those from our source control we've got a large number of changes that um, we need to make some decisions on if we were to just choose our create project okay so we've got uh, 21 changes we want to commit those um, and yes I want to commit all of those we need to give it a message now given that this is a demo um, my message is not going to be fantastic but initial commit and the same with our uh, import project I'll give it a an initial commit so that's then um, put them into our local but it's showing us so that we can see the little up arrow. So that's showing us that we need to be able to push these commits from our local repository to our remote repository. So if I do that just to get the, the ball rolling and we'll do the same with our um, Azure DevOps. So it's pushing both of those up to our remote repositories while it's doing that while the experience is is quite good if we were to click on the uh, ellipses here we can see all of the types of uh, activities or actions that we're able to undertake um, uh, against our local repository as well as our remote repositories if you happen to be a command line person then you can um, write all of your git commands down in the terminal window and not worry about um, having to use the uh, the GUI options. If you're wanting to learn more about those particular commands, one of the good things that's um, been added to Azure Data Studio to assist you with that is we can choose this show Git output. Now I'm not going to do it because it will scroll off the screen with the number of changes that uh, uh, we've put through but this will output all of those um, commands that need to be done and place them in the terminal window to assist you on on your learning curve now just to show you if we did um, or given that we've um, uh, pushed the changes out to our remote repositories if we come to our, our github uh, environment and we we'll just do a refresh so we can see here here's our uh, create and it was created two minutes ago there's all of the objects that we've got same with our azure devops do a refresh there's our import once again two minutes ago that was added to our uh, azure devops environment so we've been able to um, store things locally in our local repository as well as push them out to our remote repositories allowing for our colleagues to be able to have access to those for example if I was to invite you in onto uh, these projects you would be able to see those two uh, projects that we've just created so with that how are we for time well, not too bad all right so with that let's go back to here just to round out so as I said at the start very heavily demoed we've spent the majority of uh, the last 50 odd minutes inside of the tool having a look at things so to wrap up basically we've got um, the summary of what did we do well we looked at um, database projects or the toolings that we need to be able to undertake or add uh, our database code into database projects in our environment having our local repositories our remote repositories and doing all of our work inside of a single tool not having to have multiple things open jump between things 
For that, we looked at Azure Data Studio, Git for Windows, uh, Mac OS or Linux, GitHub, Azure DevOps, and of course, SQL Server. We went through how we can import uh, a database into our first database project, looked at its structure, as well as uh, creating our first project from scratch, that it meets all of our structure as well. With that, you're then able to now implement these into your environment and start your journey having your database pro uh, having your database code inside of your database projects, making sure or allowing for you to be um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, content and and knowing that your code is safe, is um, repeatable, is um, able to be shared with all of your colleagues. So with that, I'd like to say thank you all and happy to now open up the uh, the floor to more questions. Thank you, Warwick. Uh, that was great. That was I do have a couple more questions from Carrie and I just wanted to cover them quickly. The first one is, do you find projects easier to work with in Azure Data Studio or Visual Studio? What's your preference? Personally, I, I prefer um, ADS. I'm not a big fan of, of um, Visual Studio, OK? Um, at the moment, Visual Studio from database projects will give you uh, a lot more um, functionality, OK? Um, like I said, with being able to easily import in uh, existing um, uh, items, et cetera. The, there is work being done uh, with projects um, specifically around enhancing and getting those um, uh, the user experience more on par, but we all know that you know Visual Studio has been around for a long time. Um, and it's had a lot more work uh, put into it. But for me personally, I prefer to work in um, uh, ADS over Visual Studio. Excellent. Then another question is, do you see a lot of companies adopting ADS as a, as a valuable tool in the future? Um, so I delivered this session two days ago um, for the Atlanta um, Azure data group, user group. and one of the questions that came up there, or one of the attendees there uh, works in a um, um, management role, and his staff, one of his complaints about this was more along the lines that the there was differences between VS Code and ADS, and a lot of his developers preferred working in ADS, but it doesn't have all of the same extensions that um, ADS might have and, and vice versa. So I guess it comes down to what you're doing, how you're trying to uh, do things and, and what you need out of the tool to be able to do your job. OK, because. ADS, there's certain things that you can do uh, in Management Studio that you can't do inside of ADS. So for example, um, uh, if you're a if you're a command line person and you're um, uh, happy to to do that and you work with your, your DMVs and writing your procs, etc., then um, ADS is fantastic. And given that it's got that interaction or ease of use with multiple languages inside of the one tool, PowerShell, um, you've got um, Spark, uh, etc. Utilization of your notebooks. Then I prefer that. But then, if you're a, a GUI, uh, more of a GUI person learning, then Management Studio gives you the ability to do things with um, replication monitor, setting up your availability groups and looking at those details, setting up um, transaction log shipping, um, having access to query store, etc. Right. Whether some of those things will eventually come into into um, Azure Data Studio, I don't know. So I guess it comes down to what you need to use it for. Right? If you're a data scientist, then using this 
um, for notebooks to connect to your environment, happy days, right? Because you can create your notebooks, share them with um, your colleagues, drop them into source control, uh, put them into your remote repository. They then have access to it and uh, everybody's working on the same, uh, the same page. So I think as you, if you're just starting out with it, you'll probably jump between Management Studio and Azure Data Studio. Does that Thank answer you. your and question? One, I think it's a very good answer, and it actually answers another question that Carrie had, which is what would be a good workflow between ADS, VS Code, Visual Studio, SSMS? And I think it depends on how much experience you have and a number of other factors, what the company that you're working for prefers to use and things like that. 100% because like when I first started presenting on Azure Data Studio, one of the first questions was, is this going to replace Management Studio? No, it's a different um, different part of things. Um, the other one was, this looks very similar to VS Code. And yes, that's because Azure Data Studio is a branch of VS Code, but VS Code has a lot, uh, a whole lot of other things in it. And my understanding, and I'm, and I'm happy to um, be proven otherwise, but my understanding is VS Code is very um, targeted for developers, right? Because it has a whole lot of other things that um, you can add in where Azure Data Studio, while you can do development work in here, it is more targeted around you managing uh, your data estate. But I'm happy to be um, have that opinion. <laughs> Discussed. Corrected. <laughs> <laughs> and then one final question. So uh, Carrie asked, are there still bugs in ADS? The answer is always yes. But I had a question regarding the database projects themselves. When you mm -hmm. install the when you install the extension, does it require .NET or anything like that? Uh, if we come back to the extensions. Okay, so we can see here we have have the dependencies for the schema compare. We must have schema compare in in place. Um, uh, if we look at the MS SQL, okay. So that's um, I think this is uh, built in, so we don't have to worry about. Uh, um, worry about that side of things. Outside, like actually, um, does it require .NET? I've not gone looking behind the scenes for that. I'd have to reach out and, and ask the likes of Drew. Um, it's if if it's that a is a question requirement. <laughs> um, yeah. For that, because unlike if if you're working inside of uh, notebooks. Right. Um, when you create a, a new notebook and and depending on so if we I know this is outside of the database projects, but um, if I just quickly say new notebook as if we were going to create one. Um, you can choose your different kernel, right, that you're wanting um, your code to run against and depending on what kernel you're running against there's um uh da, da, da. Oh, with primo, where is it um well, may have, maybe they've changed it um there used to be uh, if i just change it maybe i'll go to custo and if we say add a code hmm. there used to be a an option around uh, what the prerequisites were so that you could see um, have you got uh, all of the required um, prerequisites to be able to um, undertake that. So <clears throat> I know it does it for the um, machine learning extension that you're able to then um, see 
what, uh, yeah, there we go, manage packages. Just took a little while for it to come up because we've gone for Python and it'll show me what's already installed and do I need to add anything to manage and maintain this. But from a .NET point of view for the project itself, I haven't come across anything. It'll be nice if we if um, we could have something like this where you can see here that you know I've already got yeah. a whole range of things available already installed, and if I need to add something to make it work, then this is the location that I would do that. If there are no other questions from any of the attendees, I would like to thank you for your attendance as well and wish you a good evening and go and get some food. It is almost 6.30 here. We did very well for time work. Thank you.